So, um, yeah, so today what we're going to be making are these really awesome kind of dotted acrylic paintings um, in honor of the inspired by theme that is happening down at Creative Bug HQ for a face to face summer camp. Um, I was feeling inspired by a Cree artist actually from Canada. She lives in Alberta. Her name is Delray Dumont and she is an artist that specializes mainly in pointillism and pointillism is pretty much exactly what you see here. It's making art out of kind of small dots and just all kinds of things like that. So, you know, you kind of take a collection of small dots and you make it into one big image and piece of art and you can do all kinds of mediums. I mean, I've done marker before. Um, today we're going to be working with paint. Um, so I'm going to go over the material list for today. What you're going to need is some blank paper. I'm using this mixed media pad that I have here. Um, so it's just blank, it's just white, and you're gonna um, use like a portrait orientation. Um, and then what else you're gonna need is a pencil for your drawing, for your outline. Um, you're going to need some, I have some paint right here. It's acrylic paint. Um, you don't need this color, but this is the tube I just happened to get. I'm, I'm using acrylic paint, but if you don't have those, that's okay. Just don't use watercolor for this one. So if you have something like, I don't know, tempura or any kid safe kind of paint instead of acrylic, you're totally welcome to use that. Um, but the colors we're gonna be using today are, just grab them out. So you're gonna need some green for your grass and we're gonna mix a little bit too. We're gonna practice those mixing skills. You're gonna want yellow. You're also going to want blue and red. This red is apparently not very good, but we're only using it for one thing. And then this is up to you. I'm going to use white um, to mix my blue a little bit because as you can see, this blue is kind of dark. So I don't want my sky to be terribly dark. And then something else we're going to use is I have some brown paint here and just a tiny tube. So we're going to use brown for our tree for the kind of the roots on the trunk and just every part of the tree except for the leaves. Um, but if you don't have brown, what you can do is actually mix together some red, what do we have, blue and yellow. If you mix those three together, you should get brown. Um, sometimes it turns out to be a little swampy green, so in that case you would want to add more red. Um, so if you're getting something like, if your brown turns out to be too yellow, then you want to add the opposite color of that. So that would be blue. And if your, let's say your brown turns out to be swampy green, you'd want to add red because it's across the color wheel, kind of complementary colors. Um, what else you're going to need are some Q-tips. Now, if you don't have Q-tips, that's totally okay. What else you can do is, I've honestly, I've done this before, you can use the back of a pencil. This one's a mechanical one, but if you have just a regular one, that's cool. So you can use the back of a pencil. If it has an eraser, that's probably better. Um, you can use the back of a paintbrush. I don't have one in front of me, but you can do that too. Or even if you have some skewers, don't use the pointy end, but you could use the, you know, the flat top of the skewer. So you can do that too. So it's definitely okay if you don't have Q-tips. Um, just for this activity, I'm going to be using Q-tips because I don't know. I just, I have them in my house and it's helpful for mixing the paints as well. So that's what we're going to do. And then you want a place to be able to put down your paints. I have a flat palette here. You can't see it, but oh, you can see the corner. It's right here. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. The artist that I chose to be inspired by today is Delray Dumont, and she is a Cree artist from Alberta and Canada. And so the Cree people are a group of indigenous people in Canada. And what she did is, before she decided to pursue art professionally, what she worked in like, she worked in the oil industry. So it wasn't really satisfying her as a person. And when she was growing up with her Cree roots, she was really doing a lot of art. She loved how that was a great way to express herself. Um, and so as she grew up, you know, she got that job in the oil industry and it wasn't really satisfying her because it didn't entirely align with who she was as a person. So she ended up just deciding to pursue her passion, which was art. And 
she today, she teaches workshops in Alberta. We live in Ontario, but <laughs> she teaches workshops. She creates all kinds of art. She's been in exhibits before and the style that she paints in is pointillism. So that's what I'm inspired by. Um, I was inspired to create this piece of art that we're gonna do together. So without any further ado, I'll get into it. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pencil and you have your blank piece of paper and we're gonna start by creating the shape of our tree. And we're just gonna do a quick outline so that you can get an idea of where you're gonna be placing your dots so that the colors can kind of stay within the lines a little bit. So the first thing, I'm gonna take you guys with me so you can see what's happening here. So the first thing we're gonna do, I've got my pencil here. We're going to create the trunk of our tree. So I'm gonna start about right here in the paper and I'm just gonna curve it in a little bit and back out, okay? And we'll do that again. And now we've got the trunk of our tree here. What else we can do is we can start and create some branches that are branching off. So I'll continue to do that. And we'll just kind of go like this. And this is why we use pencil first. So you can change anything at any time if you want to. Don't think about it too much. Just create some nice branches for your tree. And I just kind of like to leave the space around here open. So you are welcome to do that as well. And now take this time to just you can fill in anything. So we've got our tree. So you can take this time to change things if you'd like to. Ooh, almost dropped you guys there. So you can take that time, again, to change any things in your tree. You can fix it up a little bit. I think I might. It looks a little small now that I'm looking at it. So I'm going to do that. Uh, we're actually going to draw one more thing, which is going to be our kind of horizon line or our landscape. So I'll do that with you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. So when I talk about our horizon line, this is just going to be kind of where we are, basically where our grass and our field is going to go. So I'm going to think about starting right about kind of over here, and I'm just going to draw a nice curvy line connected around the same place. And there's our horizon line. So this part here at the bottom is gonna be the grass and everything upward will be the sky. And then we will have our green grass. That's not grass. This is our leaves here. So now that we've done our horizon line, we've done our tree, um, what we can do is put our paint onto our palette. If you don't have a palette, you can always use a piece of parchment paper, wax paper, either of those work um, or you can just you can use like a plate if you want to, if you have a like a paper plate or if you have even just a ceramic plate, that's cool too. So you don't need too much paint. So don't think you need to put a whole lot onto your palette, but I'm going to start with actually my brown, I think. So I have some brown paint here, but what you can do is like I said, mix red, yellow and blue together to make some brown. So I'll give you a minute to do that. I'm gonna put some brown down my palette here and if you have any problems making brown if you need to make brown let me know and I will try and help you the best I can um, but what I'm gonna do first is take a q-tip or the back of a skewer or the back of a pencil and I'm just gonna dip it right into my brown the good thing about this is that I don't have to be using water um, so I'm gonna dip it right into my brown and the next part is that we're just going to start filling in our tree with the brown. So I'm gonna do some dots and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. So I've got my Q-tip loaded with a little bit of paint and what I'm gonna just do is put some dots down. And something you can do is see that this dot here has the most paint on it. It's kind of, you can always take some from it and put it on the dots like that. So I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm just gonna fill up my tree with nice brown dots. So I will let you guys continue to do that. When I get to the branches, I will, ooh, almost dropped you again. 
when I get to the branches, I'll pick you guys back up, but I'm just gonna fill up the rest of my trunk and you guys can do the same as well. So I'm gonna show you guys what we can do with our branches here. Um, I've filled in pretty much the rest of my tree trunk, so I'm gonna take you guys with that. So I filled up the entire chunk here with my dots, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start on the branches. So I know you are probably all very capable of this, but I just want to give you an idea in case you were struggling. What you can do is do however many dots you would like into this branch. Just kind of like that. And it's okay if they don't stay inside of the lines. That is 100% okay. And some branches are naturally going to be thicker than others. So I was kind of going two across here and then it thinned down to one, but this branch could only go one across the other time. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys continue with those branches. I'm trying not to drop you all here. And one word of advice would be with your Q-tips, if you're if you are using Q-tips, my bad. Um, sometimes they can get kind of funny after you use them for a while and you don't really get the right, you know, size, like the kind of circular size. So if that's happening to you, something you can do is either if you've already used both sides of the Q-tip, you can just put it away. Um, or what you can do is just flip it over and use the other side and uh, you will have a fresh Q-tip kind of. So that's what I'm going to do. Mine's kind of icky on this side now, and I'm gonna continue filling up my branches. So I've got my tree done here. I will show you what that looks like. Um, you can take more time for your tree. That is okay. So this is what we've got, and it looks a little funny, but it will, I tr like trust me, it will look much better once we get the rest in. So the next thing that I'm going to do is get, I think I'm gonna do some green for my tree's leaves. I'm trying to remember what order I did this in. It doesn't really matter as long as you're as long as you're kind of careful with it. You can turn your paper to get everything in the right spot. So what I'm going to do is take some green. I've got some green paint here and I have no idea how to pronounce the name of the green because it's something really I don't know. It's like P H T A L O I don't want to butcher the name. So now that I have some green on my palette, I can take, I, so, okay, I used both sides of this Q-tip because the one side was getting kind of nasty. So I needed a new Q-tip to use with the green because I don't want to mix my brown and green at this point. Um, and I'm not going to mix this green with anything because I want the tree to have a darker green than the grass because it's usually what the case is. So I'm going to take my Q-tip. I'll take you guys with me again. So I've got my Q-tip here, and I'm just gonna dip it right into the green. And so this is one where we have not drawn any lines for this. You're just going to have some fun with it and give your tree some leaves. And your tree can have however many or however little leaves that you would like. I'm just going to what I like to do personally is just kind of give each of the branches a couple of leaves first, and then I like to go in and thicken up some areas. So now that we've got about half of this side filled in, I'll let you guys continue doing that. And then we'll come back for touch-ups if we need to do any, it's debatable. So I'm gonna show you guys, I've filled in kind of most of my tree, but what I'm gonna do is kind of go and give it some more shape, almost as if I was an arborist in a way. That's what I'm doing today. So what I'm gonna do, so you can see I've kind of got a base layer of leaves here. Um, using the same color, I'm going to go back in 
And I think it looks kind of sparse up here, so I'm gonna, ooh, that was a weird one. Okay, so I'm happy with the shape of this tree. And I'll give you a minute to be happy with the shape of your tree. If you're doing a different type of tree, ooh, a little far over there. If you're doing a different type of tree, that is great. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing here because this is your art. You can make it however you want, whatever kind of trees in the world that you like or that you feel inspired by to make, then please, gladly do that. So what I'm going to do next is actually start making the color for our grass. And for this color, we don't want it to be the exactly the same as the leaves of the tree. So what I'm actually going to do is take some very fun yellow and I'm going to just take a little bit and then I'm going to be crazy and mix it with my green. If I could get it open, that would be helpful, but there we go. So I'm going to take just, just a hint of my yellow. Ooh. Okay, so I've taken just a tiny, tiny bit of yellow, and what I can do is, you can even, honestly, if you're done with your leaves, um, to reduce your waste at the end, pretty much, if you're done with your leaves, what you can do is use the same green Q-tip if it's not too nasty, I don't know. <laughs> um, you can use that green Q-tip for your grass now, because green, grass is green, the leaves are green, so we can do that. So what I'm going to do is mix a little bit of yellow with my green, or green with yellow, either way. So I'll take you guys with me so you can see what technique I use there. This is what I do generally when I use paint brushes. In this case, I'm not using brushes and I'm just using these fun Q-tips. So what I'm gonna do is actually drag out some of that green, and then I'm gonna pick up some yellow and mix that around. And now we've got kind of a nice, more vibrant color here. You can change it, you can add more yellow, you could add more green. I like this color though, so I'm gonna work with this. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is going weird here. Anyways, I'm gonna start filling in my grass with that nice color, and I'm gonna work from bottom to top. So I'll let you guys fill in your grass. I'm gonna do the same. We can fill in our grasses together. I'm just mixing up a little bit more of my green and yellow concoction here. So if you run out of your green and yellow, do the same thing, drag out some green, grab some yellow, just make a nice vibrant green. Yeah, so once you're done your grass, and I'll just show you it briefly, um, my grass is kind of two-toned. That's actually how I like it. So I've got some nice grass in here. So what we can do for our background is take some blue, and we're also going to take some white. And the white is just going to lighten up the color a little bit. So I'm just turning my palette. So I'm going to take some blue and put it down on my palette. And then I'm going to grab some white too. And you don't need too much white, but the white is going to lighten up our blue. So it looks, so it's not too dark. So I've got some white here. And again, you can take, I have an unused side of a Q-tip, so I'm gonna do that. Um, if you need to use a new Q-tip or skewer or back of pencil, that's okay. <laughs> so I'm going to mix some blue and some white together and that's gonna give us a nice light blue. I'll do that with you guys so you can see. So I'm just going to take this side of my Q-tip. Let's drag out our blue a little bit, pick up some white, and just get it in there. So now we got kind of a nice little 
reservoir of light blue paint. And so this one is gonna be a little bit harder because now I have to work around these leaves. I'm gonna start in this corner here and just go in there with my blues. And we have to go around our leaves again, just like this. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing that, and I'll let you guys do the same. So I am now done with my sky, my tree, and my grass. So what I can do, and this is optional, this is optional to you guys, um, but I like to do this because it gives it a little bit more of a pop of color. Um, but I do like to sometimes take some yellow, and I'll put some more down because I ran out of yellow on my palette. And I just like to put a little bit of yellow into my grass actually, just the yellow how it is. And I do not have a spare Q-tip, so I had to take a new one. And I just like to take a little bit of yellow and put it right into the grass. Um, so I'll show you guys what I mean by that. Um, yeah, so I have that little tiny bit of yellow. I've got it on my Q-tip and I just like to put a little bit in the grass. I just think it's kind of cute. It's almost like dandelions. And it just lightens up the grass a little bit. So I've done that. And now the last thing that I'm going to do, I have to set you guys down to do this, is take a little bit of red. So I have some red paint here. You might have a magenta kind of color. I know I do. I have this color. So you are welcome to use either one of those. I'm gonna use red because I want this to be like an apple tree. If you want to use magenta, that can be like tree in bloom with some flowers on it if you'd like. I know out in Vancouver, there's lots of cherry trees um, or cherry blossom trees, not cherry trees. Um, so I'm gonna take a little bit of red and just a tiny bit because we only need that much. And these are gonna be my apples in my tree. So I'll take the other side of my Q-tip. If you have room, you could draw a sun. Okay, unfortunately I do not have room, but that is a really good suggestion for all the other artists who are following along. You could draw a sun somewhere up here. Um, but for now, I have my red on my Q-tip. I'm just gonna add a couple of apples to my tree. And I feel like the red of the apples kind of helps the tree to stand out a little bit more. So yeah, that is pretty much our painting that we have. Once your paint is dry, I would not recommend doing this now, but once your paint is dry, what you can do is take a Sharpie or a black pen or black marker. And because we didn't erase those pencil lines that we used to draw the trunk and the branches of our tree and draw a horizon line, what you can do is just outline them. And I'll show you guys pretty much the finished product. So that's what it would look like when it's kind of outlined like that. And it just makes it look a little bit clearer and a little bit neater, and it's just easier to almost see the picture. So you guys are welcome to do that. If you don't want to, that's okay. I personally like to. And then don't forget to sign your work at the end. So that is pretty much all for today. I'm really glad to be able to connect with you guys. And I will see you next week where we are doing more of a paper cutting kind of activity, not so much with paint this time. Um, but thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you guys again next week, okay? Bye!